With the disappointment of Fallout 76 behind them, Fallout fans are no doubt pining for a single player driven Fallout game. But with Bethesda seemingly tied up with patches for Fallout 76, Starfield, and Elder Scrolls 6, it's hard to even imagine when Fallout 5 will emerge from the vault. Enter The Outer Worlds. A single player driven Fallout inspired RPG from Fallout New Vegas developers Obsidian Entertainment. But with a setting that ditches the post apocalypse in favor of a sci fi space adventure, just how Fallout E is The Outer Worlds? And more importantly, will it speak to those who love Bethesda's worlds? Let's break it down and find out. Normally, <laughs> reviving someone after so long leads to some quite horrifying results. It's called explosive cell death, but it's really more of a liquefaction. Difficult moral dilemmas are a cornerstone of every Fallout game, with most of them having a karma mechanic to track your good and bad choices. There's no karma in The Outer Worlds, but rest assured, your moral compass will get a pretty thorough workout. In place of a karma system, you'll have various reputation scores to maintain across various factions. Often, doing a nice thing for one faction will mean screwing over another. Very rarely, if ever, are there opportunities to find a magic solution where both parties are happy. And that's awesome! You know what? You're right. The Eternal made you a loathsome reptile, and it is not in my power to change the color of your scales. In the very first big moral choice of the game, you must decide whether to cut the power to the large and populous city of Edgewater, or the small tight-knit group of deserters who left Edgewater, and now live a peaceful and happy life growing vegetables in their little garden. The choice that leads to the best result for the most people might not be as straightforward as you think. So yeah, without going too deep into spoiler territory, if you like the moral ambiguity of the Fallout games, you'll find a lot to love in the Outer Worlds. Loot is at the core of the Fallout experience, and so too in the Outer Worlds. Just like in the Fallout series, almost everything in the game world can be picked up. Most of it is junk, but junk is great too because it can be easily sold off at any vendor with the simple press and hold of a button. Like in Fallout, you'll pick up a ton of consumables that grant a temporary buff, sometimes at the expense of a temporary debuff. Only in the Outer Worlds, you can actually load those items into your inhaler to combine a bunch of different effects all at once. Just about everything else pertaining to loot is very similar to Fallout, with a few small differences. You can't freely pick up items, and you can't just take all the clothes and weapons off of every enemy and then just leave them there with their undergarments. But just about everything else, from the weight limit to the ability to mod and tinker your weapons at a workbench, are the same. If you like how Fallout does loot, you'll like it here in the Outer Worlds as well. Here's where things get a little more complicated. Fallout has always featured gigantic open worlds and the feeling of being able to go in any direction right from the start to find your own path through the game. The Outer Worlds is a little different. Instead of one large open wasteland, you explore several relatively small sections of different planets, asteroids, moons, and space stations, with the ability to fly to most of them whenever you want, much like how you would in Bioware's RPGs like KOTOR and Mass Effect. Some planets are inaccessible until you clear certain quests or find a nav path that takes you to them, but beyond that you have the freedom to visit most locations on your star map at any time. So it's a different kind of exploration than Fallout, and the individual locations lack that sprawling sense of openness, but the core idea of being able to go wherever you want, whenever you want, is still alive in the Outer Worlds, even if the actual worlds themselves are on a much smaller scale than Fallout fans are used to. One of the best aspects to quests in Fallout is that many of them are designed with multiple ways to complete them, and multiple ways to fail them. Like, for example, the decision of whether you want to disarm the nuclear bomb in Megaton, or embrace your inner diabolical psycho and set it off. The Outer Worlds also lets you embrace your inner diabolical psycho. What in the void did you do? Quests in the Outer Worlds are extremely flexible, with almost every quest offering you multiple options in how you want to approach them. And if none of those options appeal to you, there's always option C. Are you out of your mind? Your companions might not like option C, and it might lock you off from other quests down the road, but the simple fact that option C exists is kind of awesome. It turns out that space, like the wasteland, can be a lonely place at times, and having a companion or two along for the ride makes all the difference. Companions in the Outer Worlds work mostly like they do in Fallout, but since they're part of a crew, and because you can have two follow you at a time, it also feels very much like Mass Effect. When you go back to your ship, you can often find your crew members interacting with each other. Certain combinations of characters will converse as you're walking through the world. And of course, each companion has their own personal companion quest that's actually quite grand and will take you all over the solar system. Thanks, Captain. I know I've been asking a lot, 
but you help me out every time. You're the best. Even if you didn't like how companions worked in the Fallout games, they're actually done much better in the Outer Worlds, so there's a chance that you might like it here. So, to answer the question of, will a Fallout fan like the Outer Worlds? Yes, probably. You can tell that the Outer Worlds was developed by people who understand Fallout, which makes sense given Obsidian's history with the franchise. But what you shouldn't take away from this is, oh, so the Outer Worlds is just Fallout in space. Because no, it's not. As similar as the two games are, they also have substantial differences in their tone, their scope, and how they actually feel to play. Thanks for watching! For more of the Outer Worlds, check out our review, along with the first minutes of the game. And for everything else, keep it here on IGN.